I've gigged with it, I've recorded with it, and in this video, I'm going to review it. This is the Yamaha FSX3. Yamaha released their first steel string acoustic in 1966, and those red label guitars have become very collectible. In more recent years, however, I've only ever really seen Yamaha acoustics in the budget affordable range. But now, these new red label acoustics could actually change that. Before I get into the features, if you're new to the channel, hello, welcome. There's a subscribe button down there that you can click so you don't miss out on any future videos. Right, this is a completely solid wood guitar. There's no laminates here. The back and sides are solid mahogany and the top is solid Sitka spruce. The neck is mahogany and the fretboard is ebony, which should get you tone wood fanciers very excited. I am quite a big person and I usually make guitars look small, but this is small. It's not a dreadnought, it's an FS, which I think stands for Falk Small. And measurement wise, we've got 28 centimeters here, 23 centimeters here and 38 centimeters and it's about a meter in length from headstock to strap pin. We've got a 25 inch scale neck which joins the body at the 14th fret meaning you can still get some high fret access if you really need it but it's comfortable up to I'd say about the 17th fret. And the thing to note is that the guitar doesn't actually feel small because it's still quite thick in the body. It's definitely not anything like a parlor sized guitar. These days, many acoustic guitar companies are doing some kind of treatment to the wood to make their guitars feel and sound played in. Yamaha call theirs the ARE, the Acoustic Resonant Enhancement, and they use humidity and heat and pressure to make these guitars feel as if they're slightly older than they are. That's not the same as relicking that you might see on mainly electric guitars. This looks new, but it's supposed to sound older. So this has a piezo under the bridge, it's got a microphone inside and a sheet sensor under the top to capture the small vibrations. The controls are up here on top, a little bit like a tailor. We've got a master volume, we've got a blend between the microphone and the piezo system, and then we've got a bass peaking EQ. The 3 Series is made in China, whereas the 5 Series is made in Japan. And seemingly the other difference is that the 3 Series has a urea nut and saddle and a black plastic pickguard, and the 5 Series has a bone nut and saddle and a wooden pickguard. This comes in a hard bag, and in that bag you get a bunch of paperwork and an Allen key for adjusting the truss rod, and a rubber circle which goes in the sound hole and supposedly reduces feedback. However, I've never had to use this yet. So this guitar is currently priced at around 1,000 euros or dollars or pounds depending on where you are in the world. And there are several things that a 1,000 euro guitar absolutely needs to do. And one of them is stay in tune perfectly. Let's check out the tuners and see how they are. These are Yamaha branded open vintage style tuners. And I read somewhere that they used to be Grover tuners. And maybe they still are and they've just branded them Yamaha. But anyway. Um, it doesn't have a built-in tuner, so I'm going to clip on this tuner and I'm going to go through the tuning experience. Nerdy! It's in tune and hopefully you heard there were no pops or clicks or crunching of the tuners. These are, they have a wonderful response as well. There's no play in them and they feel like very expensive and very high quality tuners. So plus point number one, the tuners are superb. Also, there's no binding or anything in the nuts and everything seems to sit nicely. Now, as with all YouTube demos and reviews, take the sound samples with a little pinch of salt because there are so many factors involved in the recording process and in the listening process. And if you're honest, some of you are watching this on a smartphone right now. And if I'm honest, I'm not the world's greatest acoustic guitar recording engineer. I do have some small pencil condenser microphones. These are the Lewitt LCT040 Match, and they're in an XY configuration, and they're pointed at where the neck meets the body, so roughly the 14th fret. 
On the pickup system, I've got the blend right in the middle. So 50% mic, 50% pickup. And then we've got the bass control also in the middle, neither boosting nor cutting anything. I'll switch between the Lewitt mics and the internal sound uh, on this sound sample. Probably useful to do some fast strumming as well with some palm muting, so let's have a go at that. Let's do fingers for a little bit. Let's focus on the Atmosphere pickup system for a little bit. Firstly, I'm gonna turn it all the way to the left, which gives me just piezo pickup. And then I'll do some sound samples and turn it all the way to the right, which is purely internal microphone. Let's try 50-50 as well. Now to put some opinions in here to kick off the review, I think this lends itself far more to finger picking than it does strumming. There's this big pronounced mid range on this guitar. It's really full in that mid frequency area and it, it tends to pick out those, it warms up those finger notes nicely. It still does pretty well with the pick as well. Right, let's push those strumming capabilities with something a bit louder and more animated. Let's move that so you can see it in all its glory. Let's talk about first impressions. When I took this out of the hard bag at my acoustic duo rehearsal, I wasn't sure um, the reception I would get because it's smaller and I was honestly worried about the fact that it was small and possibly quiet and thin sounding and it absolutely isn't. This, this looks like if you Google acoustic guitar, this looks like what you'd get as a result. There's there's nothing overstated about it. It's it's no mother of pearl this or that. There's no shiny thing here or there. It's just a guitar and Yamaha have obviously put money into the other areas of this, the sound and the playability and the components. So I love how understated this is and I love the color. I think that's exactly the yellowy orange that I would expect to be on stage with if I was a folk singer. The sound wise, man, um, my friend Steve in the acoustic duo, he plays an Epiphone DR500 and I used to own that guitar as well and I enjoyed that guitar. But when we played together, this absolutely blew that out of the water, not just tone, but also volume. Now you might notice that I've got this on the headstock. 
That's because there are some sympathetic vibrations coming from the strings above the nuts. And I've moved the mic now, but if I play something, uh, you'll hear it through my vocal mic. Have a listen to this. Can you hear that after ring? It's up there. And for recording, I really don't like that. So I've put this, uh, this fret wrap on there. So this is without. Uh, this is with. Dead. So that's my preferred setting. Um, I'll put a link to that in the video description in case you wonder what the heck that is. But you can also just use an old sock if you want. Anyway, back to the guitar. Um, I also played this live. So I've got some footage of that show and I'll put that on the screen now. Yamaha and Steve with his Epiphone and I am absolutely blowing Steve's Epiphone out of the water there. Sorry Steve but I know that you agree with me that this Yamaha is better than the Epiphone and we would take this guitar over the Epiphone every single day and there are some reasons for that. Number one being uh, the sound. The sound on the stage with the pickup system that was the best acoustic live sound I've ever had and I've played acoustic many 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 times on stage that was the best sound. Playability wise, yes, it's a smaller body. It doesn't feel like it though. So I really felt like I had a big guitar. And even though I was strumming the heck out of this, it didn't seem to fart out or flub out at any point. So it didn't let me down in any terms of playability or sound. One massive plus point that maybe people are not gonna mention in other videos is the fact that this takes two AA batteries. So it's this long sort of battery insert in there. And I'm used to finding a nine volt battery uh, insert on an acoustic guitar. And I much prefer two, prefer two AAs because you can find AA batteries anywhere. And even though you can probably find nine volts most places, if you go to play in a bar or something and your guitar doesn't work, there's a high chance that you could borrow the batteries out of the bar remote control and plug in, you know, plug that into your guitar and they can watch TV later. If you had a nine volt in there, I don't know many TV remote controls that operate on square nine volt batteries. One thing that deeply intrigues me is the FS5, the Japanese brother of this one. Because spec wise, the Japanese one is almost exactly the same, but it's 400 euros more expensive or almost another 50% more expensive. And I wanna know what you get for that extra money. However, I can't see it being that much better than this. This should change your mind about Chinese made guitars if you've ever had some kind of vendetta against Chinese guitars. There are cheap guitars that happen to be made in China. This is not cheap at a thousand euros, thousand dollars. It's also made in China. The place where the guitar is made, in my opinion, makes zero difference. It's about the materials, it's about the design, and it's about that attention to detail. And this has all three of those. So that is the Yamaha FSX3. There are links down there for more information and up-to-date pricing in your region. A word of advice, because this guitar has taught me something about acoustics, and that is do not overlook the smaller bodied models. Because when Yamaha asked me to review one of their acoustics, I said, of course, I'd like to have the FG3X, which is the folk guitar, bigger dreadnought, the one that I'm more used to. And they said, we don't currently have any. Would you please take a look at the FS, which is the smaller, folk small. And I was quite, quite redu reluctant, redundant, quite also maybe, uh, quite reluctant in the beginning, but I'm so glad I did because this sits so nicely in a mix and feels so good. I, I have to try the other models, but this one is absolutely one of the best acoustic guitars I've ever played. And it's a thousand euros, which might, it, it is a lot of money, but compared to the 7,000, 8,000 euro guitars you can get, this is an absolute steal. There is a button right there to subscribe to the channel so you can come back and see any update that I have with any further Yamaha acoustic guitars. Hopefully the FG5 I get to play at some point. Otherwise, I will see you at some point in the future. Bye-bye.